Hey everyone, and welcome to Sasquatch Theory. In this episode, we have another guest from East Texas. There's been a lot of Bigfoot encounters reported in the past from East Texas, and a lot of them are not so pleasant. It could be a different type or tribe of Sasquatch that live in this region of North America. What are your thoughts and theories about the bad encounter stories from East Texas? If you have had a Bigfoot encounter, please contact me at sasquatchtheory at outlook.com. All right, I don't want to bore you guys anymore. Let's dive straight into this next Bigfoot encounter from the state of Texas. Steamboat and Christy, welcome to Sasquatch Theory. How are you guys doing today? Good, good, doing good today. Um, just, uh, you know, kind of nervous about talking on here, but I think we're doing all right. Yeah, don't, so, don't be nervous. Um, if you would, just tell us a little bit about yourself and your encounters from the very beginning. Okay, well, um, I'm Steamboat, and uh, I grew up in the Dallas area, but I moved out to East Texas, and um, I came out here not knowing or believing with all my heart that uh, Bigfoot and some other cryptids were real, and um, the fact that... uh, I didn't have to be out here too long to find out. It makes me wonder why everybody else thinks they're fake. You know, because just because one man maybe put a monkey suit on and made a video or whatever, you know, not talking about the Patterson film because I think that's real. But um, it's, uh, it's something that needs to be talked about because I was... I had the most terrifying time of my life whenever um, I I had, like, my second encounter, which was the one that changed everything. But um, my first one was about a year and a half, maybe two years ago, at my mom's house. And uh, I was down by the barn, and me and my friend were sitting down there. And... uh, we were just hanging out, listening to the music and stuff. And all of a sudden something caught, caught the attention of my eye. And I w- looked across the field at my mom's house and there was a very shiny coated black furry man walking across the, the yard. And it was like the Patterson film was there looking at me. And I'm watching it in real life, and I was like, "Huh." I was like, "Man, I saw something right there." Because my my buddy was facing me, and um, he said, "He said, what was it?" I said, "I don't know, but I'm not going to chase it. It was huge." And um, I I said, "I don't know what it was. It looked just like the Bigfoot p- film from like the '60s or '70s or whatever." And he was like, "Okay." Well, about that time when it had walked through the field and went over the fence with just one step and then walked behind the barn we were sitting in and it screamed and it, it, uh, it sounded like to me whenever it happened that, um, that it killed something back there. And I was like, man, it just killed something. And he was like, I think it did. And I was like, so you believe that I saw it, right? And he was like, yeah. And I was like, okay, okay. I'm not just crazy, but yeah, that's weird. And it, I kind of brushed it off after that. It wasn't something that really changed my view on everything, you know. But my second encounter was in December last year. And um, that 
changed everything for me because uh i was on my motorcycle and then we had a a work christmas party and it lasted pretty late because the work didn't close till like nine ten o'clock and then we all gathered after that and i was one of the first few to leave i guess but it was still like midnight you know and um I was like, hey, before it gets really cold, I'm going for a ride on this motorcycle and I'll go into the spillway and I'll see y'all tomorrow. And, um, well, I I ended up going the long way and I went around to this boat ramp that's down below the dam. And, um, this is, uh, a lake, Lake Wright Patman. And it's it's all protected and stuff. And I didn't know anything was out there till this time. But I went and I was like, well, I've already gone this far. I might as well go up here to this boat ramp and go check it out. And I'll turn around and then I'll go to the spillway and I'll ride home after that. Because I had just traded motorcycles in and uh, got a new motorcycle and I hadn't had to ride it, hadn't got to ride it very much. So I was like, before it gets cold, I'm going for this ride. And I saw something when I was going up towards the boat ramp and it was in the middle of the road and it looked at first, it looked like a big trash bag full of leaves or something. And when I got closer, it looked like somebody in a ghillie suit bent over facing away from me and my motorcycle's really loud. And I've got really bright lights and it was dark out there. And I don't know how it didn't hear me or get spooked before I got that close to it. But when I pulled up to it, I was thinking this was a hunter in a in a ghillie suit and he's maybe hurt. And I pull up next to him and he's on the left of me. And I'm on the right side of this little black pave, blacktop pavement road that has no stripes or anything on it. And um, it jumps back. And whenever it jumps back, it looks me eye to eye. And I see what I'm looking at is not something that should be here. You know, like I saw something that was maybe the only way I could explain it is um, it looked like a mutated orangutan. But it had it had um black eyes that were very black eyes. And um when it looked up at me and jumped back, it ran towards me and I'm still on the motorcycle and I'm going like five miles an hour at this time right here. So when it lunged towards me and I realized that I'm I'm in danger and it could have grabbed it could have grabbed the saddlebag or anything. It could have, it could have got me. And, um, when it lunged at me, it started chasing me and I took off towards the boat ramp. And I mean, I'm kind of like shaking, just thinking about this because this changed everything. And, uh, when this thing ran towards me, it was running with its front arms and its back legs, but it was built like, um, I guess the best I could say would be a big orangutan of some sort, but um, its its teeth looked real human-like, and um, its face was like dark, almost grayish black maybe um but i remember looking at it eye to eye because i was thinking i was going to be looking at a hunter and i always look at people that i meet right in the eyes and i know you know know about these people you know and uh when i looked at eye to eye there was a fear that went through my body that is undescribable and um it it changed everything 
in my perspective of the whole world when that thing looked me out of eye. And when I when I took off, I got about a hundred yards from it, but I was already in second gear and it was keeping up with me on the motorcycle and I got a pretty nice motorcycle. And um it was keeping up with me and I had to shift into second gear and then it trailed off. And whenever I stopped I called Christy, which is and she's here with me, but I called her on the phone and my phone was on my motorcycle and I put it on speakerphone and I was screaming. I was just screaming and I didn't know what to say. I didn't know I didn't know what to say because I was stuck at the end of a boat ramp now with this wild animal beast that I've never heard of or seen and now it's been chasing me and I don't know if it's waiting for me on the little road to go back or not and I I was screaming and I uh I could barely talk like it's getting me shook up right now but she was wondering what's going on what's going on and I'm like something chased me and something uh I don't know what it was it um I don't know what it was and I, it shouldn't have been there, you know, and I said, it, it's got me cornered and I can't get out of here. I'm afraid to leave. And I told her, and I was about crying. I was in tears almost. And uh, I was telling her, I am afraid to leave right now because there is nobody else here. There was no cars. It was about one in the morning, I estimate. And I didn't see one other soul around. And it was like, the weirdest thing because I've never been there whenever there wasn't cars or somebody parked there hanging out or something like that. So I was like, this is even weirder because there's no cars out here. And, um, man, that, you know, uh, I don't know if it would, uh, be qualified as traumatic, but, uh, in my eyes, when something changes everything in the world for you and it happens like that, that's traumatic. I mean, <laughs> uh, I don't know. That changed everything. I was wondering what else have I been lied to about because this thing is real as it gets. And um, it was covered in matted up hair. And it, I mean, it had like nasty hair. I mean, it looked like it had moss growing in it and like potato sized matted hair clumps coming off of it. Like, I remember seeing how long its arms were, though. Man, its arms went almost past its knees and its legs weren't, weren't as long as I thought they would be, you know. But, I mean, I have I got the courage up about a week later, and I called one of the game wardens out here, and I was like, hey, uh, can I tell you about something that happened that I'm, I'm just kind of concerned about? And he said, yeah, and I told him what happened at the boat ramp. And, uh, well, he said, no. Don't let me put nothing in your head, but was it a werewolf? And I said, no, I don't think so. But that made me think, well, what, what did he know that I don't know? Because uh, as far as I know, I didn't know werewolves was real, you know. And um, he uh, he was like, OK, OK, well, I'll, I'll tell my higher ups and We'll just see what they, you know, he says, if I see something like that, I'm going to shoot it. <laughs> and I said, okay, all right, well, you know, whatever you got to do to keep yourself safe, because I feel like it could be, it could be violent. I don't know. It chased me. And I don't know if it's just because I scared it and I was on a motorcycle that probably looked like a spaceship to him because it's got lights all around it. And I mean. Honestly, I was, it was getting to where it was about 60 or 50 degrees, but it was going to drop to like 20 degrees that next night. 
And that's why I wanted to go out there before it got cold. But I still had a face mask on and it, it looked kind of like a skull or something. And I had a face mask on to keep my face from getting wind chapped. And because uh, I ride motorcycles year round every day. And uh, that's every day, you know, that's all I have. So, um, and that's what I prefer, prefer you know. So just if you're wondering, but I, so I was thinking about it and maybe it wasn't aggressive and maybe it, maybe it, um, it was just as scared as I was. And that's how I felt when I looked in, when I looked in its eyes, I, I knew that thing was just as scared as I was. And I was about to have a heart attack because the only thing I could do was scream at the top of my lungs and take off as fast as I could on the motorcycle. And, um, well, what did the eyes look like? Were they big and round? Could you see any white or were they more almond shaped and jet black? They, they were jet black and they were kind of round, but a little, maybe almond shake i don't know i'm trying to remember exactly because i remember seeing the light shine off of them from my motorcycle but they were jet black i couldn't see no white it was like looking in a black marble or something made of obsidian its eyes looked i mean it it scared me so bad that um hmm, i mean that I've never been that scared before. I don't get scared easy. I mean, I walk right up in a dog's yard that nobody else will, stuff like that, you know. And uh, usually animals and all that, they get along with me, and I can go anywhere where an animal is, and they don't bother me, except for wasps. They get me every time. But this wasn't something that I've ever been taught about, and I know that I sound crazy from the perspective that I used to have as being, yeah, I mean, it looks real and all, but it's so easy to fake videos and stuff these days. What, you know, I mean, look at Harry Potter. I mean, you know what I mean? Come on. So, um, the thing is when you see it in real life, and it's already kind of happened to you once where you brushed it off like, okay, maybe I'm crazy. But I'll tell you, the thing that walked across my mom's yard was what I would call a Sasquatch. And whatever I saw at the lake, it wasn't a Sasquatch. And that's what really blew my mind. I mean, you know, there was a possibility in my heart that, you know, maybe someday I might see a Sasquatch. Okay. There's no possibility in my mind ever that I would ever see something they would call like a dog man or a whatever it was. Because, I mean, hmm, yeah, I don't know. It blew my mind. What do you think the creature was if it wasn't a Sasquatch? Because you mentioned it kind of resembled an orangutan. That's that's what I, I think it the face of it is kind of like not as far as having a snout, but the face, the mouth was really wide on it, and it wasn't a sasquatch is what it, what got me, and that's all I could tell the uh game warden. I was like, man, this thing wasn't Bigfoot. I said, I don't know if it was the Boggy Creek monster because, I mean, it's on the waters that are connected less than 20, 30 miles away from Falk, Arkansas. You know, like we're pretty close to all the waters that are relevant to this species. And um, now I'm realizing that, uh, you know, we're where i'm at i'm right in the middle of it and that happened to me and and time went on but 
my mom had let's rewind maybe a year and a half ago okay so you know the first the first incident was about a year or two years ago where it walked across the yard and um here's a little bit about that creature that my family's been through with it so there's this lot behind our house that was 10 acres or five acres and they cleared it out recently and it was just wooded area you couldn't ride a dirt bike through there i mean it was just wood and um brush everywhere and just stuff like that broken trees everywhere and um i always thought you know it's pretty pretty cool looking area and stuff but it never crossed my mind that you know sasquatch could live there before i saw what i saw you know and then i guess let's see i saw it and about four or five months after that my daughter mallory was um was playing on the trampoline at my mom's house where she lived and um she had the dog with her and it was getting closer to dark at the time whenever this happened and um she was on the trampoline and she came running inside and said to my mom she said mom mom something's out there and it's looking at me and she said what do you mean something's out there and it's looking at you she said there's something down there and i i had a camper that i had stayed in before that down there by the barn where i had my siding there and um it was right across the field where it had walked so she is 12 years old now and she didn't remember me telling my mom or anything about what i saw going across the yard when she saw this thing she came inside and she uh was so shook up my mom said well can you draw it for me well she drew a above the area map like a satellite image almost of where she was on the trampoline and where it was standing and she put this is where we were and this is where it was and she was like okay and she so she drew another one from from her point of view she drew the barn in the background and the camper and she was on the trampoline with the dog. So when she had drew what she saw, its head was above the end of the barn in the picture. And I said, Do you, was it really that tall? And she said, yeah, it was tall. And its hand came out and it waved it like this. And it, she, she held uh, her hand out with her fingers kind of spread out. And um, she said, when I saw that, I left. And so what I did was... Uh, at about the same time and i went and i kind of just looked from the point of view of the trampoline to where she was saying and there was no branches where she was talking about was you know like i was thinking maybe it was a branch sticking out maybe it was something like that she saw and um so i believe that she she had an encounter with the same one that i saw and then my mom's chickens she had nine chickens and um, they were in that field. And that was kind of the area where I saw it coming from the first time. And it all was in this field that this happened on my mom's place. And um, so this thing punched, it was about, I'd say 11 a.m. maybe. My mom and grandma were outside. I was not there at the time. And this thing in broad daylight went in my mom's field where the chicken coop is and punched the top of the chicken coop in and grabbed nine chicken all at once. And it dropped two of them dead in front of the door. And it took the other, the other chickens, the other seven chickens, and 
as it was walking back to the woods around the fence where it crossed over the first time, it was walking around there and it was just ripping chickens apart and there were pieces of chickens and feathers everywhere and they heard the commotion of the chickens from the front yard and um by the time they had made it back to see what's going on with the chicken they were all gone and there was a trail of feathers going back there and i asked my mom what happened to her chicken and she whenever she told me she said i i say it was a pack of coyotes you know and i was like that's weird you know because how would they get in like that and i was like i was like i don't know so well that was before anything happened that i came to her about like hey these things are real and she's like well let me tell you what really happened to the chickens and she said that's what got my chickens and this was recently and she was like that's what got my chickens and i said well, why didn't you tell me this before and she said i didn't want you to to get you know overexcited or freaked out about it because I, we really don't know if this thing is safe or not because i mean when it when it happened it it tore the chickens up i mean pieces of chicken were all over the yard and those were our pet chickens you know my mom's and rest in peace the baby chickens you know but she had them for a while and it devastated my mom and my grandma and my grandma was over the uh chicken coop just crying like you know this is horrible and um but i believed them at the time and when they tell me it was coyotes i was like okay well okay but i didn't think anything other than that but when she told me really what happened to the chickens and maybe uh my grandma might have got a glimpse of what was happening because she said by the time she went around she could see around the corner those feathers were still floating to the ground and um i was like wow so yeah it is real and um i've recently gone out just looking and I know they say if you go looking for Bigfoot, you're never going to see it, okay? Well, if you go looking in the right place and you keep your eyes peeled and you look for evidence, you'll know that they're real and you can go out at any time of the year and find definitive evidence that these creatures exist. And I don't know why that they won't make it a species or protect them or even um acknowledge them in court you know or something like that because it's not a mythological creature if this many people have seen it and i should have really opened my eyes to that beforehand and i probably wouldn't have been so shook up but i didn't listen and I thought, what are the chances of that really being real? You know what I mean? Well, yeah, they're real. And um, to all my friends and everybody I've ever known, um, if if uh, you know me, you know I'm telling the truth whenever I'm serious about it. But I joke around a lot. But um, when I tell you I'm serious, you can bet your bottom dollar that I'm I'm not telling a lie about it. And um so whenever me and Christy got this interest in it and I was like, man, I even got a camera for the dash the dash cam and um I borrowed some night vision from a friend of ours and um that's pretty cool stuff but this is what i learned with that so we went out and we were looking around about the same area that i had my um motorcycle encounter at the lake we were sitting on top of the dam and we just stopped and we looked out and i turned on the night vision and when it came on i turned on the 
infrared so I could see because all I could see was black at first. And when I turned the infrared on, I saw it. I saw a Sasquatch and it looked up, ran around the back of the observation nature tower there. And it was looking at me from the left side of the tower in between the top and the middle rail. Its face was looking at me with it. By the time I hit record, it was running towards that corner from the right side behind it already. So it's, I, what I learned there is always push record before you put your infrared on just in case, because I would have had a great video clip for the fact that I forgot to push record before I did that. And that's what I know. I can tell you 100% that that infrared will scare them and they can see it. And it might be like a big red light to them or something, but it looked up like deer in headlight and ran. And when it ran, it looked up through the uh, fence and it, I went back there Right then, I went back there um, with Christy, and I said, let's go see if we can find some footprints. And the ground was kind of hard out there, but I had already found a footprint out there. And um, I sent a couple of pictures of some footprints that I found, and um, you can highlight them if you want or whatever if you put them up there. But uh, if, if you can't see them, then you probably shouldn't go out in the woods because this is a track and um you know if you're walking around and you see bear tracks you know hey keep an alert well i've seen bear tracks and i've seen stuff like that this was a 20 inch or so footprint human like and there was nothing else that could have made it and it was walking right into the briars and right into the uh thicket but this um this instance where i had the night vision and i had walked down there looking around i didn't find any footprints right then but i looked where it was standing and it had its head between the rails and i can reach eight foot standing flat footed with my fingertips when i reach straight up it's eight foot um six foot six foot one and it's exactly eight foot i can touch standing flat foot so i couldn't even touch the bottom rail barely that it was it was its head was above that so i'm guessing this thing had to be between nine and a half and ten feet tall because the bot the top rail of the observation platform out there that you can watch ducks and stuff with and quote unquote ducks and stuff you know watch this kind of stuff it's it's 10 foot tall i mean so it put into perspective what i saw and how big it is and um that was a pretty cool thing that i could go down there and see exactly how tall it was right when i see saw it and um i didn't get it where it was going but i did i did see what i saw in the um night vision and i was I was happy with my findings of that time because I was like, man, I got a video of it and it's just, you can barely see it between the head, the head and between the rails. But I mean, you could see it, but, uh, I'd have to get it off the SD card or whatever. But, um, the, uh, the second time I saw a Sasquatch at the lake and this was right after the one with the night vision and um we were riding around a little bit and it was probably oh uh, like midnight one o'clock in the morning maybe and we were just riding around we we're like let's go ride around and uh so we were looking with the night vision and stuff and we came across this uh little camping spot fishing spot little boat ramp area we got out here it's kind of popular and stuff and um it's on lake right patman is uh jackson creek and whenever i was driving down there 
there wasn't anybody out there so i got the flashlight out and i shot it across the field and i saw i was like oh man look at that there's a bunch of deer and i saw a sasquatch standing in the middle of a bunch of deer and this was the biggest one i had seen by far and it still is it was uh, i estimate it to be about 12 or 13 feet tall because it made these deer look like medium-sized dogs it it was huge and it um it looked a little bit different but i know it was a sasquatch i mean it had a had no neck at all and um big and kind of muscly muscly but it was a lot wider than it was deep kind of i thought it was it was like its head kind of went up to almost a conish shape but whenever it was walking away, I could see it, and it was kind of almost looked like it was trying to sneak away because it was kind of crunched over, and it was almost like you're tiptoeing across a kitchen floor or something to go steal a cookie at nighttime, you know. And um, but it was huge compared to the deer, and I was like, "Did you see that?" And I, she was like, "No, I didn't see it, but I see I saw the deer." And I was like, okay, I said, well, I I had backed up to see if we could get another view at it, and we couldn't. So we drove down there to a little trail that goes around the little camping spots out there. And um, still, there was nobody out there. And whenever we got to the spot where it was headed to, and it would have crossed over and went down to the lake, we saw the tracks. I saw it, and I was like, that's a footprint. And I got out of the car and I had the flashlight and I shined it in the grass because there was there was dew on the grass. And I looked up the hill kind of where it goes up towards the bathroom areas up there and stuff coming down from the woods. And there was about 30 footprints right in a row. And they were one right after another. You could see where it went through two trees at the top of the hill where this little mound was, walked right over the mound and came straight down and it walked right across the path where we were standing. And I said, now, do you see that? And she said, yes. I said, that's evidence right there. I said, I know that I sound crazy when I say, hey, you got to pay attention because you've missed one already. Well." You got to pay attention because I just saw this one and here's its footprints. And we looked and there was no denying it. I mean, it was it was there and um, it was big. It was very big. And uh, I don't know if it was hunting them deer, but them deer looked like they were just at ease. And it was kind of it looked like it was almost uh, at had a friendship with the deer because they weren't running and it was just in the middle of them i mean it didn't look like if if it if it hunted deer all the time i think the deer might act a little different around it than what they would normally do kind of in the field you know and it looked like they were just uh, about seven or eight deer a herd of deer right there just eating and looking up at me when we pulled up like hey And that's when I saw it. And it was the only thing moving whenever I saw it. I was like, whoa. And, um, but she didn't see it from her point of view where she was sitting there. It was, it was kind of blocked or something where she couldn't see it. So I tried to back up and that, but, um, so you say that Christy saw the tracks as well. Can you confirm that? Oh, is she with you right now? Yeah. Yeah, and Chrissy, you you saw the tracks, All right? Tell them a little bit about it. So you saw. Hello. Hello. So you witnessed these tracks that Steamboat found after he claims he had an encounter. Yeah, I thought he was messing with me. <laughs> he was like, "I just didn't." I was like, "Well, I didn't see it." You know, I'm just like, "I didn't see anything." I saw deer. Maybe you saw deer. You know, like I didn't believe him. Mm-hmm. Until he was like, well, get out. There's got to be tracks. And I was like, okay. So we got out. And I was like, is it safe to get out if you did see this big thing? I mean, logically to me. So that's why I thought he was just continuing to mess with me. So I got 
out of the car and when he was like here and we flashed the he flashed our light flashlight and I saw the footprint. I'm like, what? <laughs> He's like, you seeing this? You're seeing this, right? I'm not crazy. You're seeing this. And I was like, yes, I see it. I'm still kind of in shock myself because I'm seeing this big print and a lot of that we couldn't tell. And he was like, hey, hey, look at this. Look at this. Look at this. I'm like, okay, what else could be more than this? <laughs> and then he goes, look. And then he shows me the trail all the way up the dang thing. And I'm like, okay, I'm getting back in the car. <laughs> yeah. And I got back in the car. <laughs> okay. Well, I appreciate you sharing your part of the story, Christy. Yeah. Here, Steve. <laughs> okay. Yeah, she was she was there for that. And she, that's whenever I, that's the first time I ever had anybody witness something with me. Like, you know, like I thought I was crazy and everybody else thought I was crazy. And I figured out that right, that moment right then I wasn't crazy. You know, it's, it's verified, but it was there. So. Yeah. It but, makes you feel good when someone else experiences the activity or sees something with you. You're, you're right about that, man. It's, it, it, it's, it's funny because I swore up and down I would never go in the woods after that thing chased me on my motorcycle. I was like, I'm not going back to that lake fishing. I'm not going back in the woods. I'm not going back. And it scared me that bad. It took me a good week to go back there. And um, that's when I took the footprint picture that I showed you in the gravel and the um, briar stuff there. But um, yeah, so that that's not everything that I've seen. I've seen a lot of evidence as far as I've, um, arches and um, stuff like that. And oh, now let me tell you. Okay. I told you about behind my mom's house where they had cleared out some of that timber back there. I mean, this person came around and asked all the people, hey who owns that land over there and stuff? And they were asking, we want to buy it. Who owns it and all that? And they bought it. Well, they bought it and they cleared out all the trees off of it and started burning the big piles of trees and stuff. And that burnt for like a month out there. I mean, every day you went past it, it was still smoking and smoldering. And, um, but one night, when I got on my motorcycle and I was leaving my mom's house and it was a early morning, late night. I mean, it was probably after 3 a.m. by the time I was leaving. And I heard something and we've heard some strange noises out there, too. But I heard something and it was going, woo, woo, woo. And I was like, what the heck is that? But it was a full moon. I mean, it was a bright night. I could see, and it was like, um, oh, it was only about four or five months ago, maybe. It was still like you could see through all the trees and stuff. It's all green now. You can't see very much. But it was it was still in the winter stages. And um, I saw the silhouettes of four four or five of them in that field running back and forth. And when I say running back and forth, this wasn't like moving at a human speed. This was moving so fast that um, I'm, I would have to estimate that they were running at 40 miles an hour or better when they were doing this, but they were running back and forth, screaming, woo, woo. And I was like, what the heck is going on? Well, this was right after they had start burning and cutting all these trees down and stuff. And that's where that thing came from. And now I put it all together, man. And I believe that there was a family of them that stayed out there. And that was them that night protesting. They were protesting the cutting down of their woods right there. And um, another little 
thing about those woods specifically right there is that they're backed up behind my mom's barn. So I put a trail cam out there thinking, man, if something comes up towards the back of the barn, I'll see it. I put a trail cam out there. And um, this is another thing that makes me think that they can see or sense the infrared beams because whatever was messing with me I don't think was pers- was a person. It could have possibly been a raccoon. Is the only thing that I could think that maybe could have done this. But the game cam was strapped onto the chain link fence <clears throat> facing out and it was facing towards the woods right there. Just a little patch of woods and if a deer or anything would have walked through there, I would have got a picture of it. But I went back about three or four days later and I looked in that game cam the bottom had been opened up on it and the card had been pushed in and out because you can like click it in. It had been clicked out and it was left right there and it had been closed again. And I was like, that's weird. Maybe I didn't push the card in all the way. And I looked on the file and the last picture was me. And I was like, okay, well, that's weird. So I put it in again. I made sure that it was locked in this time and I closed it up and I even reopened it just to make sure that it wasn't pushing in and out whenever I opened it up or closed it. And it was still in when I opened it up the second time. So I was like, so from my conclusions, if this thing's tampered with when I come back, something's got to be doing it. And, um, when I came back about three or four days later, just to check it out, the same thing happened. And I didn't tell anybody about this camera, but my mom. And that's the only person I told. And there's no way she's getting back there. You know, um, it was kind of in some brush and briars and, uh, yeah, the, she don't want to go into stuff like that. So I, um, I was like, Mom, this is really, really weird. I told her, I was like, something pushed the card out twice and shut the door back on it. And I even did my own little control testing to see if I could make it reenact itself doing that, jiggling it around and stuff, and I couldn't. And I was like, something is messing with me out here. And I hadn't, I hadn't told anybody about the camera. I didn't tell anybody about it. Um, she was the only person that knew. And she didn't know its exact location either. She just knew it was out there by the barn. And, um, yeah, unless it was a raccoon messing with it and was smart enough to close it back up because it, it, so it wouldn't get rained in or something, I don't know. I, I still, I'm still puzzled about that. So I went ahead and just took the camera down and I was like, if somebody's messing with me or, or doing this because they don't want the camera there or something, I was like, I'm just going to leave it at that because that, that still puzzles me to this day. But, uh, so, but I mean, I'm pretty sure I've got, a almost about all of it that I think I wanted to cover on it. I mean, I just want everybody to know, hey, if you come from somewhere that doesn't have sightings like this, um, and you want to come to vacation and you want to come out to some nature preserve or wildlife management area or something like that and go camping and stuff like that, you need to know that there are species out there that we do not get taught about in school and um keep your mind open because if you see something and you don't think it looks right and you glance back and it's gone nine times out of ten i bet you were seeing something that was there because uh I think I've discounted a 
few times where I was like, nah, I couldn't have been nothing. I was like, you know, there ain't nothing out here. There's deer, hogs, and, uh, you know, buzzards and rabbits. And you might find the Cajun mountain lion out here and the bear out here. But I'll tell you, the bear doesn't, um, doesn't look anything like anything that I've seen out here at all. And, uh, it's, it's important to know what to do if you do see one, I believe, because I was not prepared. And maybe by me making eye contact with this thing, it was a challenge with it. And I don't know about that. You know what I mean? I'm pretty good with animals, but this took me by so much surprise that everything in my mind went out the window. Everything that I had ever been taught went out the window at that moment. And it was me running from this creature that looks like it was made to kill. And it was me and only me out there. And I had to go back past it. And I didn't know what to do. And Christy got the phone call whenever that happened. And I mean, uh, she couldn't really understand what I was saying at first. But when she got the, when she got it, like something was chasing me. And I mean, I was already probably in tears by then. But yeah, something, something's out there. And, um, and I hope, I hope that, um, I don't ever see what I saw that night again uh i hope nobody sees it again and uh it it's a different being i think that the sasquatch that walked across my mom's yard looked almost uh sophisticated like you know he looked well groomed his coat was very shiny i don't know exactly if it was a he or she because i can't i didn't see the details but from the first patterson video i saw i thought it was i assumed it was a man but then later on i found out it was a woman bigfoot but you know um but it it was just like the patty video walking across my mom's yard that first time and then for me to discount it i was like "Ah, i don't know man i'm i don't know i've been out in the heat i don't know you know (laughs) and um yeah just just beware and i think that women and children especially you all need to really really be aware of your surroundings because you don't know what these things are capable of and you honestly don't know how fast they can be they can move so fast that there is no way no way a human will ever get away from them if it wants that human so i mean saying that I don't think these things could be, you know, hunting us or whatever. I think we might find out one day that they're a lot more peaceful than we know, because I think they're a lot more intelligent than we think they are for them to be around and get away with being the mythological creature like leprechauns or whatever that, you know, everybody talks about, but nobody ever sees one. Well, there's there's got to be some intelligence behind the, those eyes that that can say, "Hey, <laughs> I've been here the whole time." So, what makes you think I'm dumb? You haven't been able to catch me, you know. We still haven't got a body, and it does bother me. I mean, it puzzles me why why don't we have one? But what are they hiding from us too because they obviously know about them i mean all the natural preserves and stuff like that you know the old woods where you see old old trees that have died and fallen over because of old age and you see that everywhere out there by that lake i mean it's that hasn't been logged out there in a long time because it's all a preserve i mean all the way from Lake Rat Patman down the Sulphur River all the way to the wildlife management preserves out there like Mercer Bayou and all that all into Louisiana down there to the Atchafalaya Basin I mean this place is covered with Sasquatch you gotta you gotta be aware about it 
I mean, my great grandma used to tell me about the woolly boogers and stuff, and I didn't know what she was talking about, but I was thinking, you know, maybe she's talking about coyotes and all that out there. But she would tell me about it, and I didn't ever put it into effect whenever we were out there on the 12 mile bayou in Louisiana. You know, I didn't think when she's saying, watch out for them things, that it's Bigfoot out there, but they're there. And uh, I think that the older people might know about it more than us youngsters because hey i mean people have had been seeing them forever but when it when it's like that (laughs) when you come face to face and it it's it's basically lunging at you on a motorcycle you better hope you got gas in that motorcycle because uh If I would have ran out of gas right there, I don't know what could have happened. I think I would have had a heart attack, (laughs) if anything. I mean, I would have been dead no matter what. (laughs) But All right. Well, I appreciate you and Christy sharing your encounters and experiences with all of us. And I would like to touch back on your second encounter that you had last year in December after you left work around midnight. You mentioned that. It wasn't a Bigfoot. Now, if you had to classify it and match it up to something, was it something like an upright dog, a bear, or a gorilla? What would you compare it to? It's, I now, looking back, I've been kind of referring to that encounter as a dogman encounter because I've heard a lot of stories about the dogman out here, and I I can't discount these stories, you know, because now that I've had multiple occasions where I've been able to witness a creature that I didn't think existed, you know, and um, it's put into perspective, man. It's it's, I don't know this. It could have been a it could have been a ape species of some sort, but not one that I know of. But it wasn't a a Sasquatch, and I think it would have walked around at a normal pace. I think it would have been upright. But whenever it chased me, it lunged at me on all fours. And um, it's, man, I don't know. And, you know, uh, I was watching one of your videos about a guy that didn't want to call a thing a Wendigo or whatever. But I still don't know what I saw at the lake is the thing and that's what really 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 got me traumatized about that is that i still can't tell you exactly what i saw but i can only remember bits and pieces of the details that i can remember because i was literally in shock i mean i was literally in shock it was there's no other way to put it i mean Okay. Whenever did it, did it something have, like that happens, <laughs> yeah. keep going. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. Sorry to cut you off. Did it have a snout, ears, and a long tail, or it? Yeah, it, it, I don't remember seeing a tail. I remember that detail. I think that whenever it was hunched over, uh, facing away from me, um, it didn't have a tail. I didn't see one, but I couldn't remember exactly the way that its back legs were oriented like a if they were like a human like or if they were like a kangaroo like or something like you know like a dog or yeah like bow you know because no i understand and that's and um that's what the the game warden asked me was which way was his legs facing and i said man I, i can't remember but i think when i if I was to crouch down and my legs were a little bit shorter, my arms were longer, I think I could have run the way that it was running with legs like I have, you know. Mm-hmm. So that's the only thing that I, I could come up with. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I understand. And we'll just label it as an unknown because I won't say that it's, you know, you saw Bigfoot because I wasn't there and you were, you saw this thing eye to eye and you still can't classify it. So I understand. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, another thing is East Texas is a very it's a very hot area for Sasquatch activity and in the past I actually had a guy on the show from East Texas or I think he used to live there. 
he was riding his motorcycle in a forested area and a Sasquatch came out of the woods and started chasing him on his motorcycle and he had a bucket to get it out of there. And my theory was the sound of the motor disturbed the Sasquatch and it pissed it off and that's why it chased the guy. Yeah, yeah. See, if he knows what a Sasquatch looks like, because I know there's more than one species now, but if he knows that that was a Sasquatch that he disturbed, then I could see that too, you know. But um, when I tell you it wasn't a Sasquatch, I, I mean, the only thing I could think of is just be safe out there, y'all, for real. I mean, it's they're in the area i mean they you might not have them in your backyard like i had them but after the chickens went missing and i found out what happened to them i mean that's close to home and uh you know i just i'm i really really wish somebody would push for the for the acknowledgement of these species and to at least do something as far as protect the people or protect the animal protect the creature because the the creature probably needs protecting just as much as we need protection from it because it's probably not got a lot of land and that's why they have these wildlife reserves and nature reserves is because that's that's their home and um out here i mean if you go on to this there's land out here by the lakes and stuff like that they're there and um also one of the pictures i sent to you was a google maps image of a satellite image and i don't know if you could disprove it for me or not but i found this while i was fishing and this was right across the river from where i was at and it's right there on the sofa river and i see these what looks like the the heads and the shoulders of three Sasquatches and their shadows on the satellite image. And I'm like, Whoa, that looks like a family of Sasquatches right across the river from me on this image. And I'm like, so I snapped a screenshot of it. And those are one of the images I sent to you, but, um, yeah, they're, they're there. And I, I just love what you're doing, Miguel. And, um, man, keep it up. And I, I just, I think that the work that people like you do will ultimately lead to the acknowledgement and the protection of these species and the people that go in the woods hunting and fishing their whole lives and might not see one and then see one one day and it changes everything for them. Maybe we would be a little more prepared if we knew what to do if we saw one of those creatures if we knew not to look it in the eyes or if we knew like hey to don't put your gun down but don't point it at it you know if you've got a gun on you i wouldn't make a threatening gesture with it but i definitely wouldn't lay it down because if it knows what guns are then um yeah you're out of there if you if you if you're seen with a gun and you're seen as okay we're about equal right now he's not making a a threatening gesture towards me but i see he has that boom boom in his hand you know if he can think like they they think intelligently like i think they can then um yeah you just i just really wish that uh i would have been more prepared for that <laughs> and i just hope that everybody else is more prepared for that than i am if they do encounter something like that and that's the ultimate message i have is that uh this is all facts and this is 100 percent real and um i am now a believer and thanks to your youtube channels and ones like yours we're starting to realize slowly as a as a whole the population that yeah these things are real and um the people that look down upon the people that have seen a sasquatch or a creature like that i don't wish harm on you but i do 
want to see your face when you do have your first encounter like I did. Because if I could have recorded myself, I mean, I was just completely in shock. And I was one of the guys saying, ah, that's funny. That's a, you know, that's funny. It's really a made up story. You know, no. Yeah, I got I got told and shown. And, uh, you know. Just keep your mind open, man, everybody in the world. And uh, no, we're not alone here. And um, I, I can only give you my firsthand stories and it's it's all i got you know so that's that's where it's at man and i I appreciate what you do so much so well i appreciate you opening up and sharing all that with all of us and i could really relate to your story when you said it changed your entire perspective in life and with how many encounters you actually had do you by any chance think that you were marked or um you know they're following you maybe the first one you encountered ever since that they started following you around it has crossed my mind but um I don't know, man. I, I put myself out there. I go fishing at nighttime and I go to the lake at nighttime and I go riding around whenever it's, you know, unfavorable weather. And I've been known to go out on the motorcycle when it's raining and, you know, foggy outside. I mean, sometimes I just like to go for a ride no matter what conditions it is. So I put myself out there and I go to these areas that, you know, look kind of squatchy now you know to me i can point out an area like the arches i sent you in pictures that i took that area right there tells me all day long hey if you come across this area enough times you're going to see evidence that something has changed or you're going to see a creature because those those arches right there i mean i don't see anything naturally making those and I don't see people going out there in the middle of the woods and making stuff like that either. You know, I mean, who knows? Yeah. But, Oh, I wanted to mention, I actually just got back from a boat ramp before, um, before I went into work today and I was trying to see if I could have anything happen. There was a report there on the BFRO's website last year where somebody was getting rocks thrown at them when they were fishing. Wow. And, um, my buddies down in Southeast, southeast missouri they actually sit at a boat ramp because they've experienced a lot of activity there and there's been some encounters in the past so boat ramps seem to be a really hot spot for activity i mean it's not an area where people um necessarily congregate it's um you know it's a boat ramp it's not a beach so yeah there are a lot of people there at times you know when they're loading their kayaks or their boats but as far as a lot of people just beaching up in that area. You don't, you don't see a lot of that, do you? Yeah, no. Um, I mean, you might see, it surprised me that I, when I was out there that night, that there was no cars at all, excuse me. But, um, when I was out there, oh, I I go out there, you know, pretty often. And usually a hundred percent of the time, there's at least maybe one car sitting in the parking lot. Uh, you know, a couple or something out, you know, having a date night or whatever, you know, something like that. There's usually maybe one car out there or a boat trailer in the parking lot with a truck connected to it. You know, somebody's out there, but it just really surprised me that night that there wasn't, wasn't a soul in sight. And that's why I was thinking this couldn't have been the hunter or something that somebody was trying to, you know, scare me or something. I mean, I, I saw the wrinkles on its face i saw the teeth i saw that they you know i mean it was real and uh yeah i mean (laughs) i don't want to keep it dragging on but that's i hope that you listening are more prepared than i was if you ever do encounter something like that and um that's that's my ultimate goal right here and to say hi to all my friends and family and um you know just know that those people that you've made fun of your whole life for believing in Bigfoot, they're the ones that are going to be laughing in the end because, um, really you're the one that's behind, you know, 
when you when you catch up and you realize it is real they're real it's a it's a different world after that so you know i don't know what comes next <laughs> yeah. i hope this is the end of my cryptids um adventures as far as the creatures i see because i don't want to see anything else i mean i've, I've seen enough <laughs> Yeah, and um, yeah. I don't I don't want to drag this on any longer than it has to be. But um, what color was the first Sasquatch that you seen at your mom's house? Uh, that one was very dark black. I mean, it was very dark. It looked like coal, and it had shiny, shiny hair. And it was, I mean, it looked like it was just. It was actually a beautiful creature. When I saw it, I was in I was in awe of the beauty of it. As far as I, I was scared, no, not really. But I was telling my buddy, I was like, I'm not going to chase if whatever I saw was real. I'm not chasing that. And then we heard it. So, but yeah, that one was very jet black. The, the, the one that was in the middle of the deer was more of a grayish tan color, maybe like a khaki almost. Mm -hmm. And then the thing that chased me at the lake had more of a reddish or, um, in places it was black hair and then it had more of a, a brownish reddish shine to it in places where it was matted up like it had been sun bleached or something but it had longer hair and it was just nasty it looked just looked just like you picked up a old towel off the side of the lake that's been laying there with moss on it and stuff i mean it was just nasty i don't remember a smell and I, I didn't hear anything, but I also had a toboggan and I had a face mask on. And started, I'm being real about it in this time right now. You just better listen because if you go out in the woods by yourself and you see one of these things and you aren't prepared, well, I just hope your heart's strong enough to handle that. <laughs> so, but um, Miguel, I appreciate everything. and. Um, and I'll, I hope to keep in touch with you. And, uh, I just, I appreciate everything you do, man. Your stories, your, your videos, everything, the research. I mean, I, I'm, I, I, I'm probably saying thank you for more than just me, but thank you from all of us. So, well, I appreciate that. And I also appreciate your kindness and your willingness to tell your story here on Sasquatch Theory. So thank you to you and Christy. All right, guys, another creepy East Texas Bigfoot encounter and cryptid encounter. I can never figure out what he saw on his Harley, but I don't think he was too sure either, other than it being a creature that shouldn't exist. I have noticed a trend in the past with guests and people who have a dogman sighting and it seems like people will sometimes label an unknown creature as dogman. My thing is, how do you know it's dogman if you didn't see any features that would describe a dogman other than a large, hairy, upright, or on all fours creature? I think it would be better for people who have seen these unknown creatures to label it as an unknown cryptid. It's just best not to plant seeds in people's minds if you don't know for sure yourself. I just say that because my last guest, it was a guy who had an encounter from Greenville, Missouri. He was so quick to label it as a dogman sighting and that it disappeared, but he never really saw any features that I would consider a dogman other than it looking like an upright figure that was all black and having a hood over its head. To me that doesn't scream out dogman, you didn't see a snout, ears, and a large tail. But yeah, I feel like people are just um, trying to label it just for the sake of labeling it. But in this case, I don't think this guy was, I think he really doesn't know what he saw and he was just trying to find an explanation. But yeah, I appreciate everyone for listening, watching the videos, and I really appreciate all the subscribers and people who have supported the channel in the past. So I hope you guys really have a good one, and thank you so much for watching Sasquatch Theory. Thank you everyone, and take care.
Thank <laughs> you.